Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed, we do. A lot of big stories breaking this morning. First of all, all of these major primaries march yep. on some big ones. Perhaps the biggest one uh, on the map for tomorrow in the state of Georgia. Trump, of course, backing Purdue versus the incumbent Governor Brian Kemp. We'll give you the latest there. Also, the very latest in terms of results coming out of Pennsylvania, where we still do not have answers as yes. to who will be the Republican nominee for Senate. As of now, I would say Oz has picked up a little bit of ground. It's looking more likely like it'll be him, but it still is totally anyone's game between him and McCormick. So we have the very latest there. Also some devastating new polling for Biden about how people are feeling, hilariously, how the administration is trying to spin that as well. <laughs> um, and some new revelations uh, from Hillary Clinton that you do not want to miss. Plus, uh, big news breaking actually overnight. Biden is overseas in Japan, and he <laughs> made some pretty bombshell comments that seemed to surprise everyone, yes. the uh, reporters who were there, uh, his own team, effectively changing the long-standing U.S. position towards Taiwan of strategic ambiguity to affirmatively say, if China invades, we will meet them militarily. Yeah, it's the second time that he said that, except this time he explicitly said yes to the military question. So completely, we got lucky. Yeah, yeah, completely unambiguous. Yeah, right. we got lucky. <laughs> I would love to say that we planned this in right. advance and we knew this was going to be, you know, on the menu for today. But it just so happens that we actually have a Taiwan expert, yes. Elbridge Colby, who is booked for the show, who can right. dig into all of this. The other big news that's coming out of this is a new trade block. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, is this uh, sort of TPP by another new Name. They're saying it's going to be ultimately more limited, so we can dig into those details with Elbridge Colby as well. But we wanted to start with those primaries in Georgia and across the country. Yeah, that's right. The Georgia primary is just incredibly significant on a variety of levels. I mean, I think that any political analyst, myself included, in terms of what we thought was going to happen is that Brian Kemp was completely toast in the Georgia gubernatorial primary, especially when David Perdue, the former senator, decided that he was going to run for that. He barely lost his Senate seat there to John Ossoff, and it seemed him being being blessed with the stop the steal Trump magic, how could he possibly lose? And yet, poll after poll after poll shows Purdue not just down, but down by over 30 points. And the New York Times actually did a decent write-up on this. Let's put this up there on the screen. What Donald Trump did not count on in Georgia. What they point to is that, number one, David Purdue did not want to run for governor. The president, former president, Trump, blew up his phone constantly, <laughs> being like, you really need to run for governor. You really need to run for governor. You have my complete and total endorsement. You're going to make sure that I'm going to make sure that you win. Remember that he had promised that he was going to go out of his way in order to make sure that Brian Kemp lost the election. He promised that many times in November. He said, no matter what happens, I'll be here campaigning against your governor, Brian Kemp. But as we see now, Kemp has a tremendous amount of loyalty amongst the Republican faithful. And it's fascinating because even Trump Republicans who are in the primary crystal, poll after poll shows us this, say, yeah, I like Trump. I identify as a Trump Republican, not even a Republican. But Brian Kemp, he's not all that bad. Well, and it's a really fascinating test case of how much Trump can borrow his own personal political brand and make his own voters embrace it fully. So, you know, this is, if, if, things go the way that the polls look like, and look, you know, we have no idea, been burned by polls in the past, it is a tremendous humiliation to Trump. Yes. There's no other way to say it. I think, uh, so there's a lot here. I mean, first of all, the best that Purdue can hope for at this point is to force a runoff. Yeah. So to keep Kemp under 50%. And let me tell you, it would take a dramatic turn of events and the polls being wildly off. Yeah. Even for that to happen, I mean, right now, Kemp is up around 60% or, or even more than that. So, um, yeah, he has blown Purdue out of the water on this thing. And, you know, what the New York Times found, and I've been listening to a lot of Greg Bluestein has mm -hmm. a podcast that's just focused on Georgia politics. We have a great reporter that we've had on this show from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. And Kemp has been an extremely conservative governor. Yes. I mean, he's hit sort of all the, like, you know, cultural issues for Republicans. He did a CRT bill. He did a very restrictive abortion bill. He's done very, you know, uh, gotten rid of all the sort of any gun control legislation. Mm -hmm. That's been stripped away. There was a tax cut. He's also paired that with, um, so he's, you know, been culturally very conservative, also did very restrictive voting laws, which were extremely controversial. Remember, Joe oh, yeah, Biden called remember. them the Jim Crow yeah, laws, right. uh, new Jim Crow laws yes. or something like probably that. Probably helped Brian Kemp, actually. In the right. primary, yeah, I think yeah, it yeah, probably yeah. did, right? Yeah. So, uh, and he's paired that with these 
had a few big wins in terms of economic development. Um, there's a new electric truck plant east of Atlanta. He just recently announced a new Hyundai electric vehicle plant to be built outside of Savannah. Uh, he gave raises to teachers and state government employees. So in terms of the Republican base, he's been there on every single issue. So I think that's the thing for Trump is in some of these other races like with J.D. Vance mm -hmm. or with Oz where, you know, if Oz wins, I think Trump's endorsement will have been the de determining factor. It was a situation where you had candidates who were a little bit less defined. They were a little bit less known to the base. So Trump's imprimatur really made the difference. Whereas with Kemp, Georgia Republican voters felt like, no, no, we know this guy. Yes. Yeah, we know we're, you're not happy with him on Stop This Deal, but he's done this other list of things that are important to us. And so we appreciate your guidance here, but we're going our own way. Yeah, I've been, you know, I've been really thinking about it. And I think one of the keys might be this. A lot of the Republicans, self-identified Republicans who were maybe voting in the Pennsylvania primary, Ohio primary, they were not really Republicans before that or they weren't politically activated. They were Trump people who were really brought them out. Whereas- I mean, Georgia Republicans, like Georgia's been a Republican state for like 60 years. So if you consider it in that way, these people have been culturally conservative and Republican identifying for decades, long before Trump ever became on the scene. They like Trump, but they're existing Republican voters. And so they're maybe capable of thinking about politics in a different way and much more maybe like not, when I say values oriented, I mean around like what the Republican voter in general cares about a lot more. And because Brian Kemp has stood by them, them on all of these except for Stop the Steal, which never really was a core Republican thing. It was much more of a Trump Republican thing. Well, then that really does help his case. And look, all of this is bearing out in terms of the last polls heading into this race. Put this up there. You know, this is Fox News poll shows that Purdue is down by 32 points. Kemp leads him in basically avoiding a runoff completely. I mean, 60 percent of voters prefer Brian Kemp compared with just 28 percent. And if you think about it, over March, this has had a substantial shift during the campaign. Purdue actually had 39 percent whenever he announced with some of the Trump figure. But with Kemp being able to make his case on the airwaves and say, no, I'm the real conservative, I'm the real you know, Republican in this race against David Perdue, and all David Perdue has on him at the end of the day is stop the steal. So this is a good you know, a very good test of like how much that actually matters to the mean Republican voter. And we've said this a million times, you know, in the middle of inflation and all this other stuff, you're putting up guys like Doug Mastriano or if Purdue, you know, had become the governor, their only case to be made is, oh, I'm going to overturn the election, not yeah. deal with all this other stuff that's going on in your life. Purdue seems to have also run a really terrible campaign. That's true. I mean, yeah. he basically in the home stretch, I mean, seems to have kind of given up. I mean, he's <laughs> barely doing any public appearances. Yep. Um, he's not up on the airwaves. Now, there is outside spending, putting ads, uh, I don't know if they're for him or against um, Kemp up on the airwaves, but his own campaign is not running any TV ads in the final week of the primary. Like, that's bananas. Mm -hmm. And this is a very wealthy individual. You were saying he'd barely put any of, well, comparatively. He only put half a million dollars of his Which, for money. him, yeah. he was one of the wealthiest senators. I think his net worth is something like $60 million. He was the CEO of Dollar General. So if he wanted to put in more, he could. Um, Trump is kind of trying to distance himself, trying to wash his hands of him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, on the other side, all kinds of Republicans are lining up behind Kemp. First of all, the entire Republican uh caucus in the Georgia state legislature is effectively behind him at this mm -hmm. point. So he's got all the hometown people behind him. He made some very smart moves in terms of taking some key players off the board by giving them sort of plum positions within his administration to mm -hmm. shut them up. Very clever. Uh, folks like Chris Christie are coming in to sort of, you know, be on the side of this winning candidate against a big trump back candidate. And the most significant one is Mike Pence. Yep who seems to, there's a new piece out this morning in the New York Times, who seems to be testing the waters for potentially running in 2024, even if Trump is there. Now, do I think that effort <laughs> will be successful? No, I do not. But clearly, by backing Kemp in this kind of proxy war between the hard Trump-aligned forces and the somewhat more Trump-skeptical forces, he is also trying to sort of you know, lay the groundwork here and put his own political stamp on this. It's a big deal. Mike Pence is going to be on the ground tonight, you know, with the, one of the last rallies there for Brian Kemp. And, uh, you know, I think it just comes back to what I was saying. Like, guys like Chris Christie and Pence and all of them, they've been around for a long time, longer than Trump. And a lot of those Republican voters there have also been in the party longer than Trump, quite literally. 
literally. So when you consider that, it makes sense that it's going to be more of an independent-minded place. We have some of the ads that both Brian Kemp and David Perdue have been playing just to give you guys a taste of what it looks like down there. Let's take a listen. I understand you may not agree with everything that I've done, but you can't say I haven't done what I promised I would do. We had to protect lives, but also livelihoods. That is why we are in a fight for the soul of our state. Illegals flooding our border. Skyrocketing gas prices. Crippling inflation. The brink of war. Folks, that all started right here when Brian Kemp sold us out and allowed radicals to steal the election. Kemp is just another establishment politician who fought Trump. Enough is enough. I there you go. Doesn't no. work. It was interesting. Bluestein even said that in the final um, weeks of this campaign, Purdue has shifted his messaging away from Stop the Steal. Fascinating. Because it yeah, clearly see, was not, hitting. it wasn't enough. There needed to be some other yep. agenda plan. Hey, here's my economic plan when people are struggling, and that is clearly their number one issue. Um, couple. Let me make the opposite case a little what the Purdue people would say. Mm -hmm. There's been extremely high turnout in early voting. Um, their, you know, spin on that is, oh, that's all the, like, energized Trump people and the polls aren't capturing what's really going on. Maybe. Just want to put it out there. Yeah. That's what they're saying. Uh, the other thing that's interesting, though, about that vote is uh, Georgia has open primaries, so you don't have to be a registered Republican to vote in the primaries. Mm -hmm. The Democratic side is a foregone conclusion. Stacey Abrams is going to be the Democratic nominee. Um, obviously, uh, Raphael Warnock is going to be the nominee for Senate, the incumbent Repu uh, Democratic senator there. So the Democrats could vote in the Republican primary, and so far in the early vote, something like 6 to 8% of the voters have actually been Democrats. Mm. Um, and, They're uh, all going to vote for Purdue, I assume. No, yeah. actually, oh. no, because there was a uh, one of the reporters at AJC interviewed a number of these voters, and they all said they're voting for Kemp because they're so concerned. They know that a Republican oh, is likely to win this year. They're so concerned about the implications for democracy huh. that even though they're certainly not big Kemp, uh, Brian Kemp fans, at least the, I think, 16 or so voters who fell in this category were Democrats voting in the Republican primary by this particular reporter said, we're voting for Kemp because we're worried about uh, Purdue and elect uh, election certification. So. Will that be a factor? Who knows? And could that be contributing to some of the surge and turnout? Possibly. Um, there's another couple of races here that are interesting. You've got uh, Herschel Walker is very likely to be the Republican nominee for Senate to go against Raphael Warnock. Um, you know, he sort of ran away with that race. The other one that's interesting, though, is remember that guy Brad Raffensperger, who's the Secretary of State, who become, became very famous or infamous, I guess, oh, depending yeah, on your view— call. When this call was released between him and Trump, when Trump was urging him to, quote, find enough votes to reverse his defeat in Georgia, uh, the polls there, very close. There's a Trump-backed candidate uh, against him named Jody Heiss. That one, I think, is kind of a jump ball from the best I can tell. There's less public polling, but the public polling that exists has even that one tied. And, and that's another one where you would think— that this guy, you know, his whole reason people know about him is in opposition to Trump. His whole job is to sort of be, you know, the arbiter of, mm -hmm. of free and fair elections in the state. So even the fact that, you know, that one isn't a slam dunk for Trump either is pretty telling. Oh, I think that this is tremendously telling about the pure just power of stop the steal. Frankly, it's kind of heartening. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll find out how exactly it works out in Pennsylvania. But I think, you know, I've always said that even for the people who believe, like, you should at least have faith that normal folks are normal folks and they're not going to make this their top priority because they're not crazy, especially whenever there is high gas prices, inflation, culture war, wherever you want to stand on it. All of those things rate for people much higher than whatever happened in an election that we basically know all of the results from. And let's put this up there. You know, even Trump himself basically riding off into the sun with humili humiliation, washing hands of Purdue in Georgia as his campaign limps in the final stretch. You alluded to this. David Perdue, not, and he's not on TV, trailing badly in the polls. He's written off by every Republican political insider, both nationally and in Georgia. And at one time, he was the presumptive gubernatorial nominee. So to him to have the backing and Trump having, you know, come to the state, backed him, said for over the last two years that he would do everything in his power in order to defeat Kemp and for Kemp to still win that primary and even avoid a runoff 
humiliating. I mean, there is no other way to say it. And uh, it's a good insight into politics around how much some of this nonsense actually matters. I'm not going to say that it doesn't. If Mastriano becomes a governor, that genuinely could trigger like an actual constitutional crisis. But in terms of uh, Brian Kemp or St. David Perdue, at, at current times, it looks like that could be avoided. Maybe we'll watch this clip back, you know, in two days and be like, wow, the guy actually won the election. Yeah, like, so, well, we were we totally go. wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, for now, uh, it looks like that's what's going to happen down there. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.